Well, howdy friends, Brian Fleshig and Mad River Outfitters in the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools. And welcome back to another episode in our Getting Started in Fly Fishing series. So far, we've talked about the fly rod, we've talked about the fly reel. And if you remember back to episode number one, I gave you my list of six basic things that you need to understand. And today we're up to number three, the fly line system. The fly line system is composed of three parts. And those three parts are, first and foremost, your fly line backing. We're going to talk about that here today. The fly line itself, and last but not least, a leader. Now friends, now we're starting to get into really important components of your system. You heard me say before that the fly rod, eh, all fly rods will work. You can cast with just about any fly rod out there in the world. The fly reel, as a beginner, it's not going to do that much for you. You don't need to dwell on that. Whatever reel you have is going to work just fine. But we need to get this part right, okay? Especially the fly line itself and the leader. Basically, the way to think of it is, as you get closer to the fly, the more important the components of your system become. So let's take a quick look here today at the different parts of the fly line system. And first and foremost, the first thing that goes on to my fly reel is called backing. Okay, and backing is essentially fancy string. It is braided Dacron. It's designed for this purpose. It retains its strength when it's wet. It doesn't swell when it's wet, and it's not gonna rot over time, okay? Usually on a, your average fly reel, you're gonna get about 125 yards of backing on the reel first before you tie your fly line on. If you're fishing in salt water, you're usually gonna get about 225 yards. And if you're fishing blue water, you may have as much as 400 yards. Now fly line backing serves two purposes. First of all, <clears throat> it fills up space on your reel. It fills up a bunch of space. If you just took your 80 foot fly line and spooled it onto the reel without the backing, you're only going to fill up so much space. And each time you crank that reel one revolution, you're only going to be bringing in a certain amount of line. So if you remember back to our previous episode on reels, by adding a certain amount of fly line backing to the reel, you're thus increasing the arbor. So every time you crank that reel, you're bringing in more line. The second thing that a fly line does is it provides an insurance policy. Most average fly lines you're about to learn are we're gonna call them about 80 foot in length. And if a fish goes further than 80 foot, I've got at least 125 yards of backing, maybe more. Uh, and that way, if a fish goes, now you've got, let's say 380 foot or more, if a fish goes further than 380 foot, I figure he deserves to have my fly line. He can take it at that point. But if he goes further than 80, 80 foot, I've got fly line backing attached to my fly line, making sure that a fish doesn't run off with my line. Average Joe, average Jane, you've heard me say that before. Um, fly line backing, you're not gonna worry about it too much. You're probably never gonna see it, but having it there to increase your crank ratio is very important. My recommendation is that if you're, if you're buying a kit, it's going to have the backing on. If you're buying a fly rod and reel setup from an outfit or a pro shop, uh, they're going to put that, uh, this on for you. A fly shop, a good fly shop is going to put this backing on for you. They're going to put on the proper amount. They're going to put on uh, in the proper direction. And you don't ever have to worry about it. And now the next up is our fly line. Okay. The fly line <clears throat> is my orange stuff here. Uh, this is very, very important. It's actually the fly line in the fly fishing system that you're actually casting. Or as Lefty Cray used to say, Lefty says you're unrolling this fly line. The fly line is where we basically get our weight in the system. It's the weight of this line that we're moving back and forth with the fly rod, not the fly. And therefore, the fly is going to be attached to a leader, which we're going to learn about in a future episode. And that is pulling and then pushing the fly along for the ride. So the fly line is very, very important. In fact, if you were to pick an item to spend good money on and to get a premium product, 
Don't get a premium fly rod, don't get a premium fly reel, but get yourself a premium fly line. It's so very, very important. So let's take a, a look at some of the variables when it comes to fly lines themselves. <clears throat> First and foremost is um, the weight of the line. And if you go back to our episode on rods, I kind of explained that, but the weight of a line Fly lines are weighed in grains and such and such grains, let's actually go back, such and such grains equals a one weight, such and such grains equals a two weight, three weight, etc., etc., on up to 15 or 16 weight fly lines. And really simple, you don't need to memorize the grain weights, that's a jeweler's unit of measure, it's really not important, especially now. You just need to know that a one weight fly line is designed to be cast on a one weight fly rod. Pretty simple math, okay? But that has to do with the weight and then therefore it'll also translate into the thickness of the line. So a, a two weight fly line is designed to be cast on a two weight fly rod. A two weight fly rod is designed, is made for a two weight line. So match up the numbers. Our second variable is the taper. Fly lines are tapered. And this, what this does is it permits the dissipation of energy as that line is unrolling in front of you, okay? Let me draw this on the board. <clears throat> the fly line taper, by the way, that you wanna look for for today's modern graphite fly rods is called weight forward. Weight forward fly line is what you want as a beginner it's what you want as an intermediate. It's what you want as an advanced angler. It's also, you'll see it referred to on the, the line packages as WF, stands for weight forward. Your typical weight forward fly line looks something like this. This is where it's gonna be attached to the backing and then attached to your reel. This is very thin, what we call running line. And then you're gonna get into what's called the belly of the line. And the belly of the line, that's where you have the most mass and the most weight. And that belly is what's going to bend your fly rod and make that fly rod work for you. And then we get into the front taper. Okay. And, <clears throat> and this is where we start to bleed off energy. You're going less and less energy. You're going to find out in next week's episode that that continues down the leader and we continue to bleed off energy until it reaches the fly. Okay. Basically my entire fly fishing system is tapered. My arm where the cast starts is tapered. Of course your rod is tapered. You now know that your fly line is tapered and you're going to find out that your leader is tapered. And this is so very critical in how this fly fishing system works. Okay. Just to give you a rough idea, uh, this is going to be about 40 foot on average. What we call the rear taper might be about five foot. Your belly might be about 20 foot. And then your front taper might be about 15 foot. Now, <clears throat> different types of fly lines uh, might vary in the dimensions. I'm just kind of giving you a ballpark, but that's going to be a grand total of 80 foot from where you attach it to the backing and, and attach it to your reel and to the tip of it where you're gonna attach your leader. Approximately 80 foot, again, some of them differ. Some of these specs might be different, but that's kind of an average just to give you an idea, okay? So a weight forward fly line is what you wanna have. I can also refer you back to a, a video that we did previously here on our YouTube channel about selecting the right fly line. We'll probably even put a link here to that or down below so that you can go back and review some of the, the basics on weight forward fly lines for just getting started. Okay, so you've got your line weight and you have uh, your taper, which weight forward is what you want. Now, <clears throat> let's take a look at the density of the line. Average Joe or average Jane, you don't need to worry too much about this, but I would be remiss if I didn't teach it to you here in this episode. So, a floating fly line, designated by the letter F, a floating fly line, the entire length of it floats, okay? Now, again, average Joe, average Jane, 
I don't want you to think that you need to have six different fly lines because 95 to 98% of all the fly fishing you're gonna do, even as an intermediate angler, can and will be done with a floating fly line, okay? But just be aware that there is such thing, a floating fly line with a sinking tip. And a floating fly line with a sinking tip Anywhere from say five to say 30 foot of the tip of that line are impregnated with tungsten and it's designed to sink below the surface. Okay. Now this doesn't mean you can still fish sinking flies with a floating fly line. You can still get the fly down. You're going to use a weighted fly, for example, or you're going to um, add split shot out in front of that fly. So don't be fooled in thinking that in order to fish below the surface that you have to have a sinking tip. You really don't. Um, it might be something that you may add somewhere down the line, but again, stick with a floating fly line for now. There's also such thing as called an intermediate fly line, designated by the letter I for intermediate, and a full sinking fly line designated by the letter S and a full sinking fly line basically the entire length of the line sinks and that's designed to fish at or near the bottom of a stream or a lake okay uh, if you're a hardcore bass fisherman and you're going to fish during the winter months when the bass are along the bottom you may eventually have a sinking line full sinking line or for example uh, Jerry Darkus and I used to fish Key West a lot and fish the wrecks say 60 foot 65 foot deep. When we fish Lake Erie here in Ohio, we do use sinking lines to get down 30, 35 foot. But again, average Joe, average Jane, you're probably not going to be doing that right out of the chute. So stick with a weight forward floating fly line that's matched to the number of your rod. Okay. Next week, we're going to talk about leaders. And that will be the most important episode that we do ever here on YouTube. We've had tons of requests for it. We're glad to finally get around to it. So make sure that you tune in. Don't miss our next episode where we talk about leaders and tippets, and we're going to clear up all the mystery. As always, thanks for watching. Appreciate you tuning in. Be sure to subscribe and don't